Gellis claims administrator recently sent BMW owners a letter informing them of a class action settlement with BMW North America. The settlement was approved on February 16, 2021. According to the letter, the lawsuit Gellis v. BMW of North America, LLC, related to reimbursing owners of certain BMW models made between 2012 and 2015, for costs related to timing chain and oil pump drive chain module issues. The vehicles highlighted are included in the class action suit. The lawsuit was brought forward by several BMW owners and alleges that certain BMW models had defective timing chains and oil pump drive chain modules that could lead to sudden engine failure and loss of power to the vehicles. While BMW says that it stands behind its products, the notice states, all parties have agreed to a settlement to avoid further cost and risk of a trial. Therefore, if you own any of the vehicles listed, you are now eligible to be part of the class action settlement, but need to file the appropriate claim by March 18, 2021. If you don't file a claim by March 18, you risk missing out on any reimbursement if your BMW experienced the issues mentioned previously. What are the terms of the settlement? Let's start with a Google search for timing chain module settlement. It will be the first result. Then we will click on it. The class action administrator has set up a website laying out all the details of the settlement. The site is www.timingchainmodulesettlement.com. Let's click on the common questions tab at the top. Under number six, we will find the details of the prospective settlement. Essentially, if your vehicle experienced a timing chain, oil pump drive chain issue, and or engine failure, the terms of reimbursement are categorized in three primary ways. What was the vehicle age at time of repair? How many miles were on the car at the time of repair? And whether the repair was done at a BMW dealership or independent service center? Let's use an example of a vehicle with 73,000 miles at the time of repair. Let's assume the total repair bill came out to $12,000 and involved major engine work, perhaps even an engine rebuild. If the vehicle was serviced at a BMW dealership, there is no cap to the reimbursement. So according to the diagram, you would be entitled to 75% of the $12,000 you paid, or $9,000. If you got the work done at an independent service center, the same $12,000 bill would only be reimbursed $7,500, because the reimbursement is capped at $7,500. It is also important to note that if you have any of the BMW models included in the settlement and experience the covered issues mentioned after March 18, 2021, you are still entitled to reimbursement. However, keep in mind the 8-year and 100,000 mileage limits. For example, if you have a 2014 BMW 528i that has a timing chain issue arise in 2022, it may not qualify for reimbursement anymore due to it being an 8-year-old model. How do you get the benefits of the settlement? We are back on the home page of the settlement site. In order to be a member of the settlement, you need to complete the claim form sent by mail or online at www.timingchainmodulesettlement.com. Since some may have misplaced or never received the physical letter in the mail, we will walk through how to file the claim online. Remember, the deadline to file a claim for previous repair work is March 18, 2021. After we click the claim form, at the top of the page, we are asked for the claimant identification number. This can be found on the front of the letter that you should have received in the mail. If you can't locate this number you should email the class action administrator. You should include a copy of your DMV registration, or a bill of sale, and state you need your claim and identification number in order to file a claim. Once we enter the claimant ID number, 
all the fields should be auto filled in. If you need to edit the fields, you are also able to do that. When you hit next, you will then need to give vehicle details, including model year, model, VIN and date of purchase. In addition, you will be asked about the total claim amount, the city and state where you are filing from, and your role. At this point, make sure to have the relevant repair invoice or invoices, and the vehicle's original bill of sale when you bought or leased your BMW. Also, be careful not to use commas in the numbers or decimals, as it may make you go back to the beginning. Once this is done, we hit next. Here we are asked to provide all the necessary documentation required to process a claim. A good idea may be to first collect all the documents and evidence needed, and come back to upload everything. Although it would require you to fill out the previous sections again, that would be a relatively quick process once you have all the information on hand. We also recommend writing a brief cover letter confirming the model, year and mileage of the vehicle, explaining all the documents you've attached, what happened with the vehicle and provide an explanation of the repairs. This is a tedious process, but we believe it increases the chances that your claim is approved. Let us briefly run down each item. A. Here, our repair invoice will show whether the repair order is from an authorized BMW dealer or third-party repair shop. B. An invoice or bill of sale will show the model, model year and VIN. We believe if a repair invoice at least shows the VIN, that will be sufficient as anyone can determine the make, model, and model year based on a VIN. Ideally, attaching the original bill of sale or title will be the safest bet. C. Simply attach a copy of the DMV registration that you had at the time of the repair, or the vehicle title. D. This will hopefully be clearly identified on the repair invoice or invoices. If it is not, try to get another repair order, or inspection receipt close to, or after the date of the repair, that shows the mileage was clearly less than 100,000, or the vehicle was less than 8 years old. E. Your invoice hopefully should have this breakdown. If it's a BMW authorized dealer, they will have this breakdown on every invoice, most third-party shops do as well, but if not ask them to provide it. F. Attach a bank or credit card statement, clearly showing the repair payment or payments. You can also attach a payment receipt from BMW or an independent service provider. G. In the draft cover letter, state what the repair was and how it either relates to a failed oil pump drive chain module and or failed timing chain module. In addition, if your engine needed to be replaced or rebuilt due to both a failed oil pump drive chain and timing chain module, you can state that as well. What would be ideal is for your BMW service center or third-party repair shop to write what repairs were done and why in a brief letter on their company letterhead. Given this may not be possible, just make sure to explain the repair and how it relates specifically to at least one of the two main issues that the class action lawsuit seeks to address. H. The parts description and parts numbers hopefully are on the invoice. If the invoice is from BMW we don't believe further action is needed, as that is the company standard. If a third-party invoice doesn't have this information, try calling the third-party repair shop to see if they can provide you with the additional details. I. The date of repair hopefully is clearly documented on the invoice. J. This is probably the trickiest documentation to gather. If you bought a maintenance program from BMW, you can probably state that the dealership has the records or ask the dealership for the invoices yourself, which they should be able to provide to you. If you go to independent service centers, try your best to ask for previous invoices of oil changes. As it states, if you can't get all the information, attach a draft letter, clearly stating you are doing so under penalty of perjury detailing your efforts. Obviously BMW is asking for a lot of information to ensure people don't game the system, and probably, if we are being honest, to deter a lot of claims occurring. Remember, BMW is not admitting fault, but has agreed to settle the case to avoid a protracted trial. 
This is why we believe a cover letter is helpful, as it can clearly lay out everything. Finally, don't forget to upload all the relevant documentation, such as invoices, and the cover letter, before hitting next. Note, the maximum file size allowed is 10 megabytes per upload. The uploading process is a bit quirky, so make sure you have all the documents you want in one folder. First you click choose file. Once you select your first document, type a brief description, or document password if applicable. Then hit upload. Once you do this with the rest of your documents, hit next. You'll then come to a verification screen, overviewing all the details of the claim. If everything checks out, then hit next. Finally, you get to this confirmation screen where you confirm you are not lying about the claim, or falsifying information. You type your name and hit submit. The final screen will confirm you submitted the claim. Please make sure to print out, or screenshot this confirmation page for your records. We did not immediately receive an email confirmation, so it's important to save this confirmation for evidence, and as a reference. Remember, the deadline to file a claim for any covered repair work, is March 18, 2021, or about 4 weeks from now. We hope you enjoyed this video, and please don't hesitate to comment below with any questions or comments.